Hello and welcome back. This is Frost Hair, and we're back playing Disco Elysium. Um, last time we investigated all of the. Sir, ooh, what's this box? We investigated the footsteps and a few other things around here. Ooh, let's see, he's got some money. Nice. Some magnesium for our morale. We'll take that. But you got whatever this is. The winch mechanism has been oxidizing for some years. Oh, let's see. Can I get in here? No, I can't. Let's see what's this. Pile of Eternite. An inconspicuous pile of roofing material. Eternite. Uh, why am I looking at that pile? What is this? It's nothing. Someone just left an old roofing material slanted against an old shack. Perception. Why am I looking at this pile of roofing material? And we failed. Because it's nice and orderly. Well laid pallet. Easy on the eyes. Rhythmic pattern calms your mind. Mammals like this stuff. Damn it, I didn't have to do that. So there's more to this. You get this strange feeling. What feeling? Hard to say. It's gone now. Feelings pass, you see? Especially the small ones. Okay. Alright, let's run back. Let's see. Let's I guess let's talk to the boy. There's no oh there's oh there's a dumpster. Let's open the dumpster first. I wanna investigate the area first in case the, like there's a stuff that I have to talk to the kid about. This trash container is locked. The sliding lid on the padlock says whirling in rags. There's something in there, not necessarily connected to the case, but still. Um it's got a padlock on it. So I should be able to Can I do that and this? There we go. So I should be able to open it now. No? It's a padlock. I should be able to break it, right? Why well, am I looking at you, trash container? You're just a trash container. The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage or the smell of death? <laughs> Lieutenant, what do you think could be in there? Take my glasses off for a few minutes. It's time to bother me. Oh, I'm actually gonna get my. I'm actually gonna clean them real quick. I really need to get an emote for when I clean my glasses. Trash, food waste from the cafeteria. They locked these containers to keep derelicts from flocking in. Could be evidence too. Yes, I feel like something's in there. What do you mean you feel? Uh, it's just a hunch. Maybe someone threw something in there. Hmm. He leans in to inspect the lock. How do we get the lock open? We could try using a pry bar, the one you took from my motor carriage, or, or Lieutenant, or we could ask for the key from the manager of the whirling rags, he probably has one. He might also have information, this is better than the pry bar idea. Um, okay, we guess. We'll just talk, oh, there's, oh, let's talk to this kid, I guess, see what he says. Cole, Kuno. This. The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. Okay. <laughs> if there was ever such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Jeez. Oh, yeah, never could be, Kuno. Oh, okay. Yells the other kid behind the fence. Hey, kid, a word. Police business. Right in the dick, Kuno. Get him right in the dick. The children ignore you. Love it in the dick. Oh, hey, whoa. Whoa. Whoa, that is inappropriate. And I'm, I'm glad they edited that out. That is wildly inappropriate for children to be saying. For anyone to say, really. But especially children. The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes. His jaws twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Stop using slurs at my crime scene. Pig. She's coming up strong, throwing rocks. Oh, I'm gonna fucking arrest this kid. The 
That's it. You're getting it, kid. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous, you should turn. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Juicy what now? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Yeah, Kuno! Right the lightning, Kuno! He's on drugs? He's like a ten-year-old on drugs? Kuno's right in his sea! <laughs> he wipes sweat from his brow and sends him to the rock flying. Kuno. Oh, God. These kids are too much, man. You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! No, don't throw the rake. I will arrest you. The fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno's not a gardener! Look, I have All questions right. for you. Entertain the Kuno! Show me what you got! What you got there? What you got there? Show me what you got! The body, what do you know about it? Shit, little pig, what's your question? Uh, pig's choking, he's totally choking. Kim, help me out here. What do we What do we want to know? If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he got there, and the usual. The usual being, have you seen anything out of the ordinary, or have you seen anything suspicious? Do you know who he was? Kuno's fuck gimp. He picks up a rock. Kuno uses the fuck gimp for target practice. I mean... He's trying to hack that he doesn't know anything, so you don't know anything. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. He shakes his head, clearly offended, trying to make the Kuno sing into the popophone. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell Kuno. Looks like you're that now, whatever that, I'm not gonna, even going to go there. The suspicious question doesn't really work in antagonistic situations. More on this later. Right now, let's talk about something else. You're testing Kuno's patience here. Get lost. Okay. Right, pig. This is where... About the crime scene you kids play here often. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with this little wooden choo-choo. Fuck do you want with it? Um, the ladder. Ever climb it? Look at that fucking shit. I'm trying to get Kuno killed. You trying to get Kuno killed? So you would say the ladder is unclimbable. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking acrobat. The lieutenant takes a quick note in his notebook. It's a trap, Kuno. Don't climb it, Kuno. What's in the greenhouse over there? Dunno. Kipped ass gardener used to work there. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Aeropagite descent. It used to be common first name among the Aeropagites of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. <clears throat> Hold on, the gardener used to work there? I mean, it's a greenhouse, so I assume the gardener works there. Oh, I forgot I forgot our I forgot our police officer, stupid. Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. He feels his lungs with the rancid air, his eyes get a little watery. Shit's nothing to Kuno. You mean the young woman by Orlean Rags, that gardener? Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. He looks you in the eye and nods, as if agreeing with himself. Yeah, her. I should ask... What is she doing in the greenhouse in March anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? I should ask her about that. Yeah, it seems suspicious. You don't like things like being like that. Suspicious. I was wondering about the trash container. Don't be wondering about Kuno's shit, pig. I got a very strong hunch there's something important in it, something you must find. Fuck does Kuno know about your hunch? That's your shit. You figure it out. Kuno, there's a stack of Eternite back there. That's just some shit roofing gimps left behind, lazy dinks. There it is, that strange feeling again, as if there were more that meets the eye about that pile of roofing material. <sighs> Yes, yes, some shit gimps left behind. Were those gimps left-handed? The fuck you talking about? Kuno doesn't know what left-handed gimps they were. Trying to get you to talk gimp, Kuno don't talk. 
You can't hide it. I see without vision. My with my inner eye. Inner eye? The fuck are you talking about? He loses his cool for a moment and starts yelling, Ask me a normal question, pig. They're trying to make you feel stupid, Kuno. Dude, that guy's gotta go. You glance back at the roofing material in front of the shack. Yes, you should go back there. I might have some questions for you later. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. He spits over his shoulder. I saw that black thing that went in the middle of the screen. I was like, ah, oh, it's a bug on my computer. <laughs> then looks back up at you. I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno Pig. The boy points to his chest with thumbs. It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly, the kid's usage of the third perspective, using the third person perspective as a shield. Interesting. You refer to yourself in the third person to distance yourself from the situation. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. He seems offended. Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. <clears throat> Watch out, Kuno. He's trying to fiddle you. He's going to put his hands on you. That thing behind the fence starts squealing, shrill and violent like a fire alarm. The sound gets louder as the child shouts at the windows overlooking the yard. Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! And this, this game is getting dark real fast, and it's all these little kids. Help! The boy joins in. He's got the Kuno! Help! <laughs> Just answer the questions. Help! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Pigs are hurting, Kuno! Somebody, please! It's full blast now. The wind carries the message far and wide against across Martinez. How did we get here? How did this happen? What's an even? This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his reason. Ah, uh, we're gonna try it. Oh! It was a success! Thump, the blow connects surprisingly well, leaving your knuckles tingling. Kuno feels it. This was no light tap. <sighs> this oriented 12 year old is trying to get his bearing, be bearings. I can't even talk. I think we can have a normal conversation now. Am I right, Kuno? <clears throat> Officer, this is very far from normal police conduct. Lieutenant breaks the silence. Get yourself together. For heaven's sake, he thinks this has gone too far? Don't make it any worse. Then it is. Just get back to questioning the kid. Okay, pig. He's no longer wearing his demonic grin. Something happened. The punch made him calmer. Kuno knows to respect that violent shit. You see, Kumo's dad. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. He declares with pride. The creature behind the fence has fallen ominously silent. Only her eyes are alive, jumping from actor to actor. Uh, okay, pig, talk to Kumo. We're back in this shit. He brushes the rough pants. The fuck do you want? I want to discuss the body with you again. Do you know how he got up there? Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit happens. So you didn't see it happening. You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revical. Kuno wasn't regional. Okay, where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... He looks around trying to come up with something. Mask or... I don't know. Some other place. Nighty City. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. There's no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction movie novel. That's a fictional city name. Night City doesn't exist. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been. You haven't been in Kuno's head. You don't know where Kuno was? You don't know what Kuno's been fucking up to? Don't tell him, Kuno. It's lame. It's not fucking lame. Kuno's, Kuno's building Kuno City. Night City. Rage City. The City of Rage. That's it. And it's not lame. Lame. <laughs> That's the name of Kuno City, bitch. Get the fuck off Kuno's back. This shit ain't about that. This game, this kid is vulgar. Oh, man. It's impossible to deduce what it is about. At least for the moment. If it's important, it'll come up later. Focus on the case. 
Alright. You're testing Kano's patience here. So you respect me now. You're dreaming, pig. It's not how this shit works. A little. But don't expect anything to change. Don't let him dominate you, Kuno. Fuck his fat ass. Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. I have more questions about the crime scene. Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. What the fuck do you want with it? I'll talk to him later. Alright, let's see if we can figure this out. It's a yellow. It's a white. So I can retry it. He's on your crime scene, bossing you around, and he's here for some time, too. This is where he hangs out. You have to get more out of him. He could be useful. Kuno, listen, I know this is boundary-pushing thing is new to you, but it's old news for us grown-ups. Get your snout out of Kuno's ass. He waves you off. Kuno knows how hard Kuno pushes it. Kuno pushes it hard level. You should give up, Popo, or the coon will... Fuck, keep fucking it out of you. Are you okay, Kuno? She looks worried. The coon has her confused. That went wrong. He took it as a compliment. Then he had a minor seizure. Okay, we're done talking to this guy. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Alright, let's get the potty down. The hangman. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them... The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. Look down. The cargo belt twists his neck. At an unnatural angle, the body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Alright, let's see. God, what is that? Why is it so bad? Active decay. The lieutenant raises his white piece of linen to his nose. It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. He's about to blow. The cop's going to blow, Kuno. Alright, here we go. <laughs> it smells repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth. More instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Let it out. Did I lose health for that? Or just morale? Oh god, that was awful. You feel a great force ringing you from the stomach. Your body curls and pushes it out, burst by burst, until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from stomach cancer. Acid. God. It's okay, it happens to everyone. Lieutenant keeps hands you his white handkerchief. Keep it. Thanks, wipe your mouth. Ooh, we got it. The hang hung hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Okay, where do we get ammonia from? There's a frit nearby, east of the hostel. They usually have a small apothecary. If they don't, he points to the greenhouse. There's a greenhouse here, and the gardener with the wheelbarrow right around the corner whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Hmm, pretty clever. Having the ammonia is a modifier to the endurance check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Okay. So let's turn away and leave. So let's go to... Let's go to the Frick, because I needed to go there anyways. I got 60 cents to my name. Alright, so I talked to that guy. Let's see. Oh, there's some protesters. Ooh, the, what is that? Is that change? Hell yeah. That guy up there. So there's a couple guys we can talk to, but what is this? This is the frit, I think, yeah. Let's go. Let's go into the frit. Double click to run, space to stop. Alright, what we got here? Yellow roses, dozens of them, tulips too. We got her, we got the case. 
Got some stuff in the back. What is this? Tear machine. The tear machine stands at the corner. It says one bottle, ten cents. What is this machine? Hmm. Quick look machine. That's what. That's the tear machine. Yes, but what is it? She knits her brow, confused. It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and you put it in the machine. Then it gives you money. I see. And how do I pick up tear? Pick up tear for the tear machine. You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so she shrugs awkwardly. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there. She points outside somewhere. Okay, what does this say? This is Melancholy Pop Slime plays on the radio. Let's look in here. Knickknack stand. You see several knickknack, several package raincoats fill a low shelf beneath the display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent. Expect expect for the big so it's supposed to be except except for the big Fritz slogan on the back the packages are small discreet sloppily stacked making them easier to take unnoticed no need to worry about knocking over the display what's that point to a raincoat what is what? The girl leans over the counter to see what you're referring to. Um, it's a raincoat? If you want to buy one, it's only four real. She taps on the glass counter. The raincoats patiently await purchase. Her attention is drawn to the raincoat. Stealing one undetected would not be more difficult. Alright, so we don't want that. So let's talk to her. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. She returns to her magazine. Uh, what magazine are you reading? You mean this? She looks at the cover, boasting a colorful photo, colorful photo of two girls kissing. Oh, hey. This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. Okay, jeez. I approve of this. Very futuristic. She pops her raspberry filler bubble gum and nods. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half smile. Let's proceed. I have some questions for you. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but. She puts down the magazine. Do you have any ammonia for sale? She looks up from her magazine, eyes filled with tired, e tired anyway. Yes, she just thumbed toward the end of the counter. What we have is there in the medicine cabinet. Go take a look for yourself. Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it. Did you know the man who died? Not really. Not really? Does it mean you knew him a little? Um, no, I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long? What do you think happened? Um, I don't know. No need to worry. The lieutenant's voice is soothing and professional. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay, she scratches your head. Thank you for your help. Uh-huh. She brushes the strand of hair off her face and tries to return to her magazine. Okay, well, let's see. What else? So I need to check that. <coughs> A cover of display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall inviting you closer. There it is, that dark green glass, the world of ruby, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love, alcohol. I'm in heaven, I need it all so bad. The clerk looks at the wall, the goods behind her. I'm sure if you want anything, something I can get you, just let me know and pay and stuff. She adjusts her hat. But I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but I guess you already knew that. Oh, uh, shh. Shit. I don't have enough money for any of that. Okay. Do you sell any under the counter vices? No, she fixes her hair underneath. Frit only sells legal drugs. Like the law says. Alright, well, we'll come back for that because we need to do some of that stuff later. Cabinet based. St. Based. Bestiste. Batiste. St. Batiste Pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutics. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. 
They all bear the St. Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Their, blo their logo is the Bloodless Rose, pure white, untouched by harm. Mm, oh, I need, I need three more cents to buy ammonia. Okay, well, I guess we're leaving now. Let's go see if we can find some more change somewhere. I guess we can go talk to the other lady, right? Let's just go walk over here and see if there's anything. I don't really want to talk to anyone right now. I'll come back to you guys and talk later. It says Grich. The Greater Revical Industrial Harbor. The lorries probably stored fuel here and now they store booze. Oh, I can go this way. Sweet. Oh, this is back over here. Foreign car kept in good condition. Alright, well, let's just explore around. Okay, we got a box here, something. Hey, dollar eighty-eight, let's go. This guy's just hiding over here in the corner. Tail driver. The small wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. The photograph is clutched in her hands, and there's a warm smile on her face. The photo, an amber type, from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of the winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... Excuse me, ma'am, I'd like to ask you some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Snap your fingers in front of her face. Wait. Wait, the lieutenant stops you before you can snap. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? why? I just told you why. If you say so. Okay, well. Okay, Kitsuragi, if she's the murderer, I don't want to hear anything else about it. Ooh, what's down here? White tank top. What's that? Conceptualization and suggestion. Conceptualization is a intellect based physical instrument For now, that's fine, I guess. Just leave it. Items. Ooh, the handkerchief I can sell for 90 cents. Okay. Rust. Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. So I was over here earlier and I just completely missed on some of this stuff. Let's run up there. I'll see if I miss anything else down there. We'll come back. Oh, let's go talk to this lady. Because if she lets me get in for free, then... I can't believe it's snowing again. The young woman search watches the falling snow in size. It felt like springtime just a few days ago. My partner told me you may have some ammonia. Can I have some? Hey, sure, I'm done with it. She takes a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. So I don't have to buy it. I can go buy smokes now. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Tell me, what exactly have you been doing in your greenhouse in March? Well, uh, she points to a wheelbarrow. Surprised at the question. 
This might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything grow green. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. She smiles shyly. She's the murderer. Yes, think about that cute grandma, not the weird snow. Visual calculus. Plus one disingenuous grandma. I failed? All you can see is the fact that her skin is a different color from yours. It's literally all you're going to have to run back with that. Run with that. Oh, I have to... You're black. What does that mean? She doesn't flinch. Nothing. Lieutenant turns to you. We should proceed with our business in marionettes. I have to run. Boo! Alright, we'll save our money. We have enough to buy stuff now, but we will save our money because we're going to be smart about this game. Um, we're going to actually go back this way. There was some stuff hiding, like down here. In the other areas. So I just want to see if there was... What is this? An ancient fountain. It doesn't pump water anymore. There's a tree in it. Ooh, what are you? You're a box. A green box. They're closed inside. Cheap secondhand clothes. Smelly of stranger's body odors. Don't be shy. These are premium class clothes. Good quality fabrics. Best retro design. Save the economy with your style, officer. Save the economy? That sounds off. Save the economy? What are you talking about? Having heard, officer, we got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash. Keep it in cir circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. <laughs> Thanks for the advice. I'll try to be more economically conscious. Very cool. The economy thanks you. Browse through the box. You find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made from weird polyester blends that make your body itch and sweat in all the wrong places. Economical, but also trendy. The street vendor shouts, look first hand, buy, look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy moving. Eh, we'll try it. Let's see what happens. Success. Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek, a windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind, summer, 100% waterproof, and sport. All in different typefaces. Good choice, Officer. Mega sporty, and it's only four fifty for you, sir. Um, I can't buy it yet because I don't have money yet, bro. What's in here? There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. Varieties of shapes and you colors. You like sunglasses, Officer? I've got the latest styles right here. You do. The vendor takes a pair of sunglasses and sticks them under your nose. Remember to the box. These are all boring. Boring third-rate ho-hum sunglasses made of cheap cerise plastic. The kind of plastic that melts in the sun. Those UV stickers are almost certainly just there for show. If anything, these lenses probably direct more UV light into your pupils. A UV magnifier. These are all first-rate sunglasses. <laughs> The man declares, premium design, superb material, very cool, UV resistant. They will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while you're doing dangerous police work. Um, try again, maybe you can find some interesting sunglasses in the box. <laughs> Failed. No luck, all you find is this lime-colored cellophane visor, produced by a bargain sportswear brand called Amphibian, apparently, and there's a malformed green frog on its bent cap. Oh, the visor is perfect for you, officer. It'll definitely keep the sun out of your eyes while you're shooting criminals. The street vendor makes a bang-bang sound. And all for mere six real. Turn to the lieutenant. Kim, are firefights something we should be prepared for? I hope not, he says, looking up from his browsing. You don't like it? Sure, square jaw, no problem. Let's get you some real shades. Give me those shades you recommended. Abort! Those are hideous. What's more, they don't even fit your face. You can feel them pinching your nose and chafing against your brow. Damn, officer, you look like a mega secret spy. Very secret. The man nods eagerly. They're practically made for you. I'll let you have them for two real and fifty cents. They're perfect for concealing your bloodshot and baggy eyes. No, Lieutenant gently removes the glass from your face, setting you free again. You're definitely not buying those. 
You're right. I'm too sensible for those. Are you sure? But they look so good on you. The street vendor frowns. You should think this through, officer. I'm gonna leave for now. You can go look in this box. Fallen FALN sneakers on a pedestal of speakers. You are two lonely defeated speakers. You see two lowly defeated speakers, thralls, slaves basically, perched atop them like conquerors surveying the land, a pair of FALN durable wear sneakers, Ultra Series. I can see you have a taste for luxury, officer. Can't keep your eyes off those sneakers? Inspect the sneakers. A pair of FALN Ultras, the design is impossibly sleek and simple, a futuristic silhouette with a sleek monochrome color and a jet black upper and silver lined midsole. Those sneakers, mister... The street vendor intones, those sneakers are the latest FLN speakers. Sneakers. Super rare, super fine, super cool. Only 50 real. Only? That's madness. FLN Ultra, wear the future. You remember that slogan from some magazine. Inspect the speakers. These once respectable speakers have been conquered, reduced to a mere prop with the indomitable FLN Ultras on top of them. No, no, don't look at the speakers, officer. Look at the sneakers, the man points out, the footwear. The sneakers are the stars here. Poor little speakers, pat them. No, don't pity them, officer. They're old Samaritan garbage. Don't even look at them. Check out these super cool FLN Ultras instead. Samaritan trash? It sounds like they're from the Samaritan People's Republic, produced under the dictatorship of the pro proletariat. Can't I just buy the sad, conquered... Sumerian speakers. No way, officer. Those aren't for sale. They're bad speakers. Lo-fi socialist junk. But I need some speakers. Well, if you want them, he pauses for a moment calculating. But see, they are the pedestal for my sneakers. If I let go of the speakers, where will my sneakers go? I can't leave premium lifestyle sneakers lying on the ground. If, on the other hand, you wanted to maybe buy the sneakers too, I could maybe throw in the speakers for a little extra. Fifty cents? Okay. Okay, I guess while I'm here, I'll talk to you. You see a Sam Samarin street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him in his face, he breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. The name C. Lang is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer. <coughs> Everything's cool here. Gives you a thumbs up. What's so cool? Oh. Happy sh Everything's cool. The goods are cool. The customers are cool. The place is cool. <sighs> and one more thing, officer. You're very cool. He makes both fan hands into finger pistols and fires a few finger bolts into you. Really? You think I'm cool? Oh, yeah. You got style. You got personal style. You know what you like. He surveys the consumerist kingdom with an air of satisfaction. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. He sails back into the pile of boxes he's sitting on. Don't be distracted by the flattery and funny man act. Questions. Persuade him to give you some money. Aww. No need to dress this one up. Just tell him what you want. You, I want your money now. Oh, okay. Ceiling stops to say sudden serious. But why, officer? Because I want you to bribe me. I'm a police officer, remember? That's what you're supposed to do around here. But officer, bribe you to do what? The street vendor's expression is dead serious. I don't think you really understand how bribes work, detective. He looks at you, then the vendor. Sorry, detective. The man grins. This entire incident is already forgotten. Uh, where are you from, Selang? Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All revocable. This man probably comes from Sigare... Sometimes known as the Apricot... <laughs> Suzerainty, an archipelago in the Samarin Asola. You're from Apricot Suzerainty, right? Apricot calls me 
calls to mind an air where the Sigay archipelago was colonized by Revical. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. Don't fret, let him answer. That's right, officer, but it's a bad scene for business there. Too many regulations, extremely bad for an independent local entrepreneur. Hey, why not support this local entrepreneur? You can start by buying a pair of sexy pants. Or cool sunglasses. Maybe some macaroni? I'll look around, thanks. Alright, well, we got, we got anything back here? Can we go back here? What we got? We got this thing. It's a sign. Hot air rises up from the sewer, sour, acidic, comforting. Alright, we got nothing on the ground. What is this? A helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. I'm just like, I'm going all crazy, all crazy out here. What's this? Water lockout of order until Wednesday, 7.15. Okay. What does this thing do? Water lock control panel. A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever. Beneath it, a small metal plaque. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal. But there's a crash Sumerian butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Pull the lever up. You pull the lever all the way up until the metal clicks against the conduct pins. You hear soft clunk, then nothing happens. Push it harder. <laughs> nothing happens. A cold gust of wind blowing in from the sea interrupts the silence of the situation. Mm-hmm. The lever. The lieutenant hums to himself while staring at your activities. Release the lever. <laughs> Close the water lock on Wednesday. <laughs> water lock control panel. A spring brings the lever back to its original position. You still need to close the water lock to cross the canal some other way. Wasn't there a sign of this thing functionality restored Wednesday morning? Yes. Alright, well, that's this guy. See what he says. Good day to you, officers. The burly man hangs out by the water lock, carving up a generous serving of salami. Salami? Salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the water lock. And on an enormous billboard that has fallen down in the canal between them. Do you know what caused this wreckage? Point to the smash billboard. I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like they're tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Revical. <laughs> the words devilous, daredevil driver sound ominous to you. Excuse me. Had to get something to drink and blow my nose. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here, especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. <laughs> Do you know what's further down the, ho the coast? Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much used to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. He thinks from like, yeah, not really much else, just bombed out ruins. Can I have some of that salami? Sure thing, he cuts off a slice of salami, and I'm healed! Hey! Want some too, officer? He turns to the lieutenant. The lieutenant ponders the offer for a moment, then decides to go for it. Why not? He takes a slice of salami from the man and chews on it. Alright, we know the lever does nothing already, so we're gonna bail out. Um, we're gonna go, we're gonna look at whatever this is. Roy's Pawn Shop, fast cash for faster times. There are fingerless gloves there. Nice. Let's see. What do these do? Interfacing. And these do electrochemistry. Let's do electrochemistry plus two.
Alright. Ooh, what are you? Um, I know I can probably pawn his napkin, but I'm gonna wait. What are you? Nose of fed. Got a health item. Nice. Alright, so we'll come back to the pawn shop. So, I promised you guys we would take down the body in this episode. Let's go take down the body. Oh, let's go inside here first. Let's go inside here and get the the key from Gart. Then we'll take down the body. Oh, the kitchen's open too. Can I help you? Is that crash container out back yours? Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rags. Thank you for cleaning that up. Why do you keep the container locked? Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out, that's why. And the neighbors, too. They put their trash there, they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. Are you the only party with access to the container? Well, yes, us and the garbage disposal company. Seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. I wonder what this feeling is. <laughs> Prod at him and find out. Doesn't it seem callous to you guarding even your leftovers from the poor? Callous? What are you, Kraz Mazov? Almost all establishments in Rebical keep their trash locked. The Whirling in Rags is not special in that regard. Kraz Mazov was an economist and historical materialist. He was leading figure on the grad side of the Centennial Revolution where he headed to the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism. Mazavian thought or Mazavianism. Yum yum, tell me more. He killed himself. Maybe I am Kraz Mazov. What are we talking about? Was this not about the trash container? No, wait. Whisper and point to the back of your head. What if I am Kraz Mazov? We should return this theory in a later time. He this here was about the container. We need those keys. What for, Mazov? Are you planning to nationalize my trash container? It concerns the case. The tenant's voice is harsh and sudden. Please cooperate. Hey, we got the keys. <laughs> he takes the keys from under the counter and hands them to you. Please send them back once you're done. Okay. Not a chance in hell. I'm going into the kitchen. Ooh, there's money. Money. I see money. Take it. 50 cents. Hell yeah. This is a drying the smell of chemicals and pine trees. It's up here. Money. Aroma of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. Alright, let's see. We talk to this lady and then go out the back door. Or oh, it's a guy. I thought it was a lady. <laughs> Gorsi Kubek. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood. Occasionally sipping from his mug. He must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods towards the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Gorsi and Kubek. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Gorsi Kubek. Please, it's not funny. Hello, sir. Got some time to ask you questions? The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. You got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his lid against one of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. I don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine. Okay. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. I wonder where this door leads. You do? The lieutenant regards you with a patient skepticism. It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Out of duty, we may find something pertinent to the end of the, uh, I'm drawn to its cobalt. 
It's part of the Whirling in Rags. There's something about this place that makes me want to know. Eccentric, but okay, I suppose we could look into it as a side investigation. Yes, the mini mini side investigation. He looks at you, then his door. Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafe. Oh, let's touch the door. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. It leads to a side building adjacent to this one. The old building next to this, half ruined. Whatever is, is behind it must be older. Try to push on the door. It does not budge. Alright, let's go talk to Gart. Can I help you? I saw another thing at the wheeling. Whir whirling. The mysterious blue steel door in the back of the kitchen. Oh yes, the door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door, he shrugs. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there, and I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He runs his finger across the counter to check for dirt. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. <laughs> Fine, okay, a little. He shrugs. But my job doesn't leave me time to be wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, and after the animals... And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Okay. Well, we'll come back to that, sir. We'll come back to it. Come back to you, too, lady in the wheelchair. Um, Alright, let's go take the body down. I promise we take the body down. So let's go do the body. Oh, the trash can of the body. sound is just so awesome. This crash container is locked. The sliding lid is a padlock that's whirling rags. Open the padlock with a key. With a well-oiled crack, the lock pops, o lock pops open. It should now be possible to simply raise the lid. Don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Didn't I ha just have the premonition there's something in there? There is, but you won't like it. Sweat forms on your brow. Your hand's still on the lid. Open the lid. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. We're just in time, the Lieutenant Pierce said. This hasn't been emptied in over a week. Um, look under the boxes of carton. You see milk. An egg rests with one broken egg on in it. Some insta pot, some pasta wrapper. Picking up the soggy packages somehow feels familiar. <laughs> a box falls into piece, in pieces in your hands. Batiste Soleil. So, Lel? Lel? Cereal. There are plastic pasta packages below and turbo noodles. Nothing of note, however. Pick at the rags. Among the threadbare kitchen towels, something catches your eyes. A pair of denim trousers. Grab them. As the legs of the slime covered jeans begin to unspool from the garbage, a rank corpse smell fills the air. The victim's clothes. The lieutenant smells them. Cadaver odor is faint. If these belong to the deceased, they were removed when he was still in early stages of decay. Lieutenant proceeds to produces a black plastic mark evidence from his pocket. Drop them in here, officer. Bag the trousers. Kim quickly searches the jeans, guitar mark blue jeans, pockets empty or emptied. He wore them with a belt too, a wide belt. The loops appear stretched, but he looks into the container. The belt is missing. That's it. Do you see anything else in there? I have another bag here. Something slimy catches your eye. Reach for it. A drab long sleeve shirt long sleeve shirt, olive colored, appears from the food waste dropping with, dripping with pus. Bag the shirt. <coughs> this is a military type overgarment, no label or serial number. This is the kind of rib knit shirt that's worn over light armor to conceal it in an urban scenario. He nods to himself. Anything more? The rest of the rags are just kitchen variety waste. The old yellow mug that catches your eye, but other than that, a thrown out towel, a mug, that's all. Alright, we should go to guard again and ask if he knows who put the clothes in the trash. It could be as simple as someone from the ho ho hostel cleaning the yard, or that one. That one. He nods to the red haired boy behind him. I'd advise against confronting that force. Uh, you think someone from the whirling might have been involved, maybe? 
Not really. All we know is the victim's clothes are in the trash, and the lid was locked. And this establishment had the key. It's just a small, loose thread. Yeah, we need to ask the kids to put them there. The fuck's he on about? Kids? The one behind the fence yells? You hear that, Kuno? He thinks you're an infant or something. See? Okay. Um, search the food waste. It's just organic waste, cold and slimy in your hands, apple and potato peels mostly, unidentified sludge, and the occasional chicken bone thrown in for good measure. But hey, nothing, it's nothing, nothing more to see here. What's this? What? A blue pla piece of plastic sticks out from the apple peels. It's shiny, looks like the corner of something. <coughs> it's a damaged ledger. Something larger, a clipboard. Plastic. A blue plastic clipboard with most papers, moist papers hanging from it. They look badly damaged, but you can still make out forms and notes written in a man's handwriting. Officer, is that your paperwork? No, it can't be. Yes, it is. Look, he points to it. The plastic has the RCM street grid on it. You've even got an autopsy form. A miserable looking slip of paper sticks to the board. If you don't mind my asking, how could you have let your paperwork end up in the trash? Um. It has a foreboding quality to it. Maybe I needed to lose it for the great bloodletting to begin. What are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know either. He points to your ruin notes. You should take stock of your notes and make sure it's all there. Official notes contain informants named. If some have fallen into the hands of the RCM's adversaries, bloodletting may well ensue. Okay, I'll do that. Read your ledger and name the case. It would also not hurt to start talking, taking notes on the case. He peers into the trash where soggy cartons and rags stink uninvitingly. Now, tell me what your ego eyes see, or are we finished? The mug. I'm getting that mug, too. You pick out the broken mug with an oddly racist depiction of a yellow man frolicking in saffron. Take the mug. Hmm... The man briefly glances at the mug, then returns the sight to the trash. Close the lid. The container sounds a muffled gong. That's one thing off the list. I think we got it all. Oh, close the leaf. Okay, so... I got about ten minutes to cut the body down. Or get the body down, or whatever the case may be. There he is, looking... Alright, so we want to do this one... Oh, we want to do the... We need to get out of here and use the ammonia. Turn away. So, interact. Oh, this is the yellow mug. This broken-eared mug somehow made its way into the yellow whirling rag dumpster depicts a person of Samaritan descent frolicking in a field of saffron flowers. Bucktooth and grinable, grinning feebly minded. It seems to be a cheap knockoff of some colonial era antique. Oh, it's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board that barely held together by a metal clip. The sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. I think I got it. Right. What more do you need? A rubber condom stuck to the back, a graffito that says, defeated? I think you catch the drift. Below the pathetic's terror. Do not look into the blue heart. Um, inspect the clip. The aluminum block runs the width of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across the aluminum. The surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparking with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Hey, Lieutenant, what's this? What? He's lost in his own notes. He takes a moment for him to see. That thing? It's a halogen watermark. We use it for adding information to RCM property. Interesting. What kind of information? <coughs> Depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Maybe yours will have how many cases you've solved. How many years have you been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. How can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like, for example, all RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Mine, too. 
That means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. That's all. Thank you. All right, look, browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol. They're covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files! Commit to paper! The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What's in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the jam rock quarter. There are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51. This year, the exact number is hard to estimate due to the missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases. Undertaken, not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You've attempted two cases a week on average. Is two cases a week... A good case, low Lieutenant? Huh? He raises his nose from his notes. Two complex cases to undertake is a lot. Yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it unless you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? He raises his eyebrows. That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you're making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I've made plenty of mistakes. That's okay, he nods and turns back to his own case files. We all make mistakes. Um, okay, Let's count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Commit to paper. Sadly, the ledger only comes with an old, worn down lead pencil. I'm unfitting of this monumental event. Kim, do you have a pen? Lieutenant looks into his blue notebook. Two fat, shiny pens hang from the binder like large caliber bullets on an ammo belt. He's not really saying anything, just standing there looking at them. Can I have one? Know that I give this to you. He pulls one from the loop with resentment. With this beauty, commit to paper. The tasks you've completed flow out of the blue oblong pen in a brash freehand uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simple simplicity. Inspect victim's body. Interview cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Cross the ones you finished off already. Satisfying slash sounds across paper. You're done, it seems to say, and you, and you. Things to be done and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an entirely useful tool for a detective of the citizens' militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you any, by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? Uh, the Hanged Man. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking, too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. He flips the pages of his notebook. I'm going to start calling it the Hanged Man. It's good we sorted this out. I'm done inspecting these. Browse the yellow papers. In the back, you see thin, translucent copier paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red, all covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms wouldn't be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to their type form. To type of form. What types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines, the middle ones are station calls, and the bottom most are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. Uh, field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color, you see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. Misconduct fine. Monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. But they appear pleasantly vague. Station call. These are quite sinister in tone. They give the date and time for the person to appear at the specific precinct police station, 
Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. Okay. Enough of these. Yes, all that remains now is fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. What delicious power hid within this pathetic mess? You do feel better. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for fear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paper must have spared the fragile copy paper. Um, browse the case files again? Is there something? Oh, something of a naming convention here. Yes, it appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet linary system. Each investigation has a case number written in the margins, yet still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title one might say even, one that draws inspiration from Snoop Fiction and Vespertine Cop Show staples. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, in all caps. One is called The Next World Mural, another The Square Bullet Hole Murderers, another yet The Unsolvable Case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. Guys on a couch in an unexpected location, the murder at the hookah parlor, even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece all these case files together, but it can be done later once you're done inspecting them up close. Kim, all my cases employ naming conventions similar to what we use on ours. Yes, how very childish of you, he mumbles. In your way, in my defense, almost everyone in the RCM uses the titular system in addition to the official alphanumeric. I see it's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity, officers using these rules, these titles to defer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named a case the Square Bullet Hole Murderers. Again, in your defense, <clears throat> I seem to have named one, he peeks into his notes, the man with the hole in his head. That was a real person, his death was real, still I named it that to amuse myself. I pray his loved ones never find out. What happened to him? Rail spike through the head, he died, it was a workplace accident. Okay, well I'm done expecting these. Can I read the case files now? I can. I failed. Wow, on a 72. Holy shit. It's possible, yes. Easy, no. You need to come up with a small archaeological system to reorder the remains of your past works. At the moment, all they do is fall apart in your hands. Some dates and numeric titular system is all you have. Um, look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hands. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside ever so slightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Permeables. It's not hidden per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. Peek inside. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. What did you say the color was? Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. How would I open it? With your hands. A U4 size page is hanging from the clip screwed to the top of the board. It doesn't want me to open it. But I'm going to open it. Failed it. It's not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic, slide it open, but nothing happens. Then you bend it some, then crack it. The goddamn thing is stuck. Okay, I'll smell the ledger. The acidic stench of rotting food has rubbed all over the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base, surrounded by a faint, <laughs> air of spoiled meat, the sudden, the stuff of death itself, and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of the toilet cleaner. Put the ledger away. Okay, well that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted this. You don't have to equip it to use it, just having an inventory is enough. Okay. So, let's try to cut him down again. Endurance. I used the ammonia and I still failed. The ammonia only makes it worse. 
The combination forces tears out of your ducks. You manage to keep it in for once. The second time, not so much. He's laughing at me. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is then your cheeks are wet with tears. The ammonia didn't help at all. Nor does the wind right now. You feel the lieutenant pat your back rhythmically. The weight is right is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You're facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Can we do something else? I think I want assault. No. Do it with me. No. Why can't I keep it in? I've been a cop my whole life. I've seen captains peep their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate, throw up, initial autopsy, throw up, bag it. You pass on your back again. Then drive to the station and maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. You seem to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. There's a pause. A white lie. Not being hungover helps, too. Uh, do it without me. I just can't keep it down. No, this is a two-man assignment because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. He withdraws his hand and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. Uh, but my shit already is together. No, it's not, officer. Okay. Okay. We, we should go talk to locals, find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You received a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet in the bottom right menu and equip it. Give it half an hour to get yourself together, then come back if you have another go. Okay. So I need to go down... Down here. Um, let's. Your shit is a part. What's. Oh, I don't get it. Problem. Your shit is a part. Oh, I have to take 30 minutes to research them. Oh, so it researches it. Okay. That's weird. Your shit is a part. It's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. Okay, well, we'll come back and read this later. Um. I put my gloves on though. I can go back to my clipboard. Can't open it. I thought it says I could do more interfacing. I guess not. Yellow man mug. Okay, we will interact with the yellow man mug next time. Um, so that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Um, Super pumped. I think F4. Does F4 do quick save? F5 does quick save? F5 does quick save. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, it has been awesome playing through this today. Uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. I know that I stumble over my words a little bit sometimes, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'll talk to you guys about it later. Um, I'll, I'll work on it, and then um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk about it later. So thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.